You know, people say a lot of crazy things about microwave and millimeter wave RF spectrum. Are space aliens going to use it to control our minds? Is it a plot to take over the world? <laughs> the list of conspiracy theories is long and equally wild. One crazy thing about these frequency bands that isn't made up, though, is that microwave and millimeter wave signal integrity is hard. Like, really hard. And choosing the right connectors and cabling is essential to getting our designs working properly. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today we're going to get into the world of precision RF interconnects for microwave and millimeter wave RF design. My guest is Matthew Burns from Samtech, and we're going to walk through some sample designs and talk about what you need to know to choose the right interconnect for your next project. All right, let's go. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Samtech. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia. It's good to talk with you again here on Chalk Talk. Absolutely. Now, in today's Chalk Talk, we're diving into the world of microwave and millimeter wave cable assemblies and interconnects. But Matt, before we get started, can you set the stage for us? What exactly is microwave and millimeter wave? Well, Amelia, that is a wonderful question to start our discussion off. You know, this is a little bit different topic than you and I typically are discussing. Usually we're in the world of high speed digital connectors and what the latest transceiver speeds are on emerging silicon. But what from Samtech's perspective, we see microwave and millimeter technology as a complement to that when it comes to the world of interconnect. When you hear the term RF, if you don't mind me asking, let me ask you a question, Amelia. When you hear the term RF, what do you typically think of in your day-to-day -day use? Uh, communications. Yeah, and, and I, I think that that's what most people would say. You know, if we think about our Bluetooth, we think about our Wi-Fi, we think about our cell phone and other things related to that. When we look at the carrier frequencies, the RF carrier frequencies for those solutions, they typically operate under 6 to 8 gigahertz. You know, you, you kind of see that summarized in the table on the left. And when you look at the image on the right. So when we're talking about microwave or millimeter wave solutions, that really defines what we call precision RF here at Samtech. So we're starting to see higher frequencies. Typically for us, microwave to millimeter wave is anywhere between 18 gigahertz and 110 gigahertz performance. Now the question comes up, why is that of interest? Well, some of the technology trends that we see in the industry are driving demand for those higher frequencies. A good example is 5G. You know, we're starting to see the global rollout of that technology. And as we come into 2021, you know, we're starting to see handsets from the leading providers there as well. 5G uses frequency ranges anywhere from 28 to 40 gigahertz right now. Some of the next generation solutions get us up to 60, 70, 80 gigahertz and beyond. Autonomous vehicles are using millimeter wave and microwave connectivity, whether that's automotive radar, LIDAR, or other solutions. We also see a number of experimental radar, typically targeting uh, mill error applications, phase radar array for communications, event detection, those type of things. And those again are in the 70, 80, 90, 110 gigahertz areas. So with all these trends, Amelia, that we see in the industry, you can see why there's a demand for these microwave and millimeter wave solutions. For sure. Now, Matt, let's start with the microwave part. Can you walk me through an example design? Sure, Amelia. You know, one of the things that at least helps me to understand where microwave and millimeter wave technology is going is to look at some of the basic electronic principles or RF technology principles that kind of show why things are the way they are. I am no RF interconnect design expert, but in talking with our team of experts, they've helped me to understand that there's really two basic equations that are fundamental to precision RF interconnect design. They're really defined by impedance and cutoff frequency. In most RF applications, impedance is a fixed number, you know, 50 ohms. Sometimes there's uh, some 75 ohm solutions. But you can see that the impedance and the cutoff frequency or the highest frequency that a coaxial cable or a connector can pass is really defined by three physical parameters. One, it's the center conductor diameter, which is the little d, the outer conductor diameter, which is the capital D, and then the dielectric constant. Since impedance is fixed for most RF applications, cable designers 
which have to focus in on just making sure they get the ratio of their diameters and also in regards to the dielectric constant to meet what they are targeting on. But you can see that to get higher cutoff frequencies, you have to get smaller and smaller diameter cables. So that's one of the rules of thumb that we see within microwave RF design is that to get higher frequencies, higher performance, your interconnect has to get smaller and smaller. And as we talk about our portfolio throughout this chalk talk, you'll see some of the design trade-offs that Samtech has made to get higher performance interconnect in terms of frequency. Okay, cool. So Matt, what about the connector aspect of a microwave design? What does that look like? Amelia, as with any engineering challenge, there's always trade-offs, right? Engineers are always trying to find the right balance between performance and in terms of what the solution costs. When you think about the information we talked about on the previous slide, that we really see being played out in the RF interconnect space. You know, a standard SMA connector, SMAs are popular in the RF field. They kind of go everywhere. And one of the reasons that they are so prevalent is because they're very cost effective. They use PTFE as a dielectric, which is, again, readily available. And when you start to look at how the SMA connectors, the standard SMA connectors are, are made, it uses a brass material. It doesn't require precision manufacturing because the performance doesn't have to be high. The max frequency that these solutions support may be only up to 26 gigahertz. Now that works in a number of applications, but if you're looking at higher performance or trying to send a lot of data at higher frequencies, you need something that's more high precision or that performs better. So the same diameter between an SMA and a 2.92, but notice some of the changes that you have on the high precision solution. You change the dielectric to air, which gives you a better dielectric constant. You're able to use the same size as SMAs, but it does require higher precision material such as stainless steel. The tolerance variation obviously is much more sensitive, as in most cases you have to pay to play. However, to get that higher frequency and that higher performance, that's necessary. Okay, so what kind of components make up a system like this? Well, this next slide kind of illustrates multiple points. But from Samtech's perspective, when we think about RF, we typically think of three different types of solutions. There's a PCB-mounted connector. There's a connector that usually attaches to a cable. And then there's the cable itself. And when you look at these graphics, whether it's in the, the cable connector, the PCB connector, or the cable itself, you'll see that the diameter of the dielectric, in this instance on the upper right-hand side where we have X, that coincides to the solutions that SAMPEC offers, but also helps us to see, based on the math that we considered a few slides ago, what the max frequency range of a particular product family is. So looking at the table on the bottom right, that is a brief overview of everything that SAMTEC offers from a size standpoint and also the theoretical performance that it can get based on the equations that we covered previously. So as an example, you know, we have a 3.5 millimeter solution, which can provide performance up to 34 gigahertz. Now you want to get higher frequencies, you get a smaller diameter on the dielectric. As we mentioned during the early part of the Chalk Talk, Amelia, our microwave and millimeter wave solutions cover 18 to 110 gigahertz. And we have product solutions available or will be available from 3.5 millimeter down to one millimeter dielectric sizes. Great. So when I'm connecting to a PCB here, what are my options? Well, there are any number of variables that have to be considered when choosing an RF connector for a particular application. One area you've heard us talk about numerous chalk talks is how do I launch my signal? It's not just a matter of attaching the connector to a PCB. Is it going through the top layer? Is it going through a mid layer? Am I using micro strip or strip line? How do I route my vias around the RF connector to make sure that I get good isolation from an electrical standpoint? Am I going to use something that's soldered or solderless? The performance of the solution is restricted by the board launch. You know, So if we're looking for ideal performance, do we use an edge launch? Do we use a vertical launch? Do we use a vertical surface mount? Do we use a vertical through hole? Do we use a right angle through hole? We determine the size of the RF connector based on the performance we're looking at. Then we start to look at more of the variables within those particular sizes to find the right solution for the right application on a specific design. So Matt, you mentioned threaded connectors. Can you tell me a little bit about what you guys have to offer here? Sure. So what we have available right now 
and this is easily available through our partner Mauser, is any number of solutions at 3.5 millimeter, 2.92 millimeter, 2.4 millimeter, and 1.85 millimeter. You can see these illustrated in the graphics to the right. Some of the key features that we have on Samtex threaded connectors are an air dielectric design, which gives higher performance, higher frequency range for low visoir and low insertion loss. These are also able to be connected to any number of low loss millimeter wave cables and cable assemblies. We also offer a rugged interface for consistent, reliable performance, and cable connectors and compression mount board level interconnects are also available. Okay, cool. Now, Matt, do you guys have a roadmap for Precision RF? What does that look like? Well, we do. And what we mentioned on the previous slide was our 3.5, our 2.92, our 2.4, and our 1.85s. And again, those are all available directly available directly from Mauser as we speak. We're also working on solutions that will get us up to 95 gigahertz with the 1.35 millimeter diameter dielectrics. At 1.35 millimeter, our current roadmap includes compression mount, high performance microwave cable assemblies, and then also 1.0 millimeter spaced dielectrics which give us edge mount and high performance microwave cable assemblies as well. We have our current portfolio available for Mauser, and as our portfolio continues to expand, we'll also make these available as well. Okay, Matt, so do you have any other types of PCB mount connector options? We do, Amelia. The threaded connectors that we talked about on the previous slide are really targeted towards board to cable applications. So you have a PCB mount connector and then you attach a cable to it. Not all RF connections are cable to board. An increasing number of applications, especially in 5G, where there's a number from dozens to hundreds of RF interconnects for the phase radar that's used within 5G applications, you need to get connectors as close together as possible, and they're typically PCB to PCB. So instead of having a threaded connector, we have some push-on connectors. The most popular family that we have available right now is our SMPM solutions. You can see how small these SMPM solutions are in relation to the graphic there on the central bottom of the slide. Key features of our SMPM connectors include miniature footprints. They're 30% smaller than existing SMP solutions. They do offer a push-on design for quick and easy mating. There's full detente or smooth bore for varying retention forces. There's also a bullet adapter for board-to-board -board blind mating applications. Even though these push-on connectors are designed for board-to-board -board interconnects, they're also flexible enough to use low-loss millimeter wave cable assemblies for applications. We also see an increasing number of requests for ganged connectors, and we're looking to expand our SMPM families to include gang connectors and gang cable assemblies as well. Okay, cool. So Matt, can you walk me through how these microwave cables are put together? Yeah, the reason we wanted to talk about that, Amelia, is you can start to see that to get performance across an RF signal chain, it's not just having the precision within the connector, whether that's on the PCB or on the cable assembly. We also have to have high precision RF cables that can handle the frequency ranges that are desired for the specific applications. So this illustration briefly shows the amount of detail that goes into some of Samtech's high precision RF cables. So we use a silver plated copper center conductor. We use a solid or air enhanced dielectric. We also add flat wire and a flat wire braid and then a protective jacket that provides the balance between high performance and also flexibility within a design or a cable assembly. Samtex differentiation for microwave cable, ultra low loss, which leads to higher performance, flexible cable solutions, and varying sizes. The table here on the bottom right just gives a very high level in terms of the parameters that customers are, are interested in in finding the right cable for their solution. Okay, cool. Now, what does Samtech offer specifically in microwave cabling solutions? Well, that's a great question again, Amelia, given what we've talked about so far. And this table briefly summarizes the options that we have available. Looking across this, this may be an eye chart, but when you dig into it a little bit deeper, it helps someone to see why Samtech and the industry at large has so many different high performance RF cable assemblies or microwave cable assemblies available. A good example is if you look at the far end, the 0.277 low loss flexible assembly, that has a very low insertion loss of 0.16 but the max frequency may not be very high. That is ideal for an application where someone needs a flat response from you know, zero to 18 gigahertz. So that might be applicable for their application. Whereas someone may be able to accept a higher insertion loss 
and they need a, a higher carrier frequency. So something like our MWC 25501, which gives you max frequency of out to 40 gigahertz. So the benefit of the flexibility of our portfolio is it allows us to mix and match the right cable assembly with the right cable connector and the right PCB connector to find the ideal solution for our customer. Cool. Now, Matt, how does this all fit together? You're just waiting for the punchline, aren't you? That's right. <laughs> This slide kind of ties all these bits and pieces together. Samtech has spent a tremendous amount of effort. We've made numerous investments. We've made some strategic acquisitions over the last couple of years for the sole purpose of becoming a vertically integrated precision RF microwave and millimeter wave cable assembly and interconnect solution provider. What does that mean? Well, with inside of Samtech, we have the PCB mount connectors, the cable mount connectors, and the cable assemblies to provide a number of solutions from anywhere between 18 to 110 gigahertz. We also backed it up with industry leading tech support, which enables us to assist our customers in launch optimization, simulation and testing, and full system optimization. In reality, vertical integration equals full system support for Samtech and its partners and through our sales channels through Mauser. All right, Matt, can you recap your main points for me? We're glad to, Amelia. The biggest thing that we hope your listeners take away today is, is that Samtech has become a vertically integrated precision RF interconnect solutions provider. We have the PCB mount connectors, we have the cable mount connectors, and we have the cable that allows us to come up with any solution for any application from 18 gigahertz all the way up to 110 gigahertz. Our entire portfolio of solutions is now available in our Precision RF Microwave and Millimeter Wave Interconnect Solutions Guide. And for more information on the guide and our product portfolio, you can visit the Mauser website or email us at rfgroup at samtech.com. Excellent. Well, Matt, it's a pleasure to speak with you yet again. Thank you so much for joining me. Always glad to be here, Amelia. Thank you again. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Samtech. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.